Okay, it gives me great pleasure to be here with Biff Byford, and once again we're in a sanctum, in a sanctum hotel here yeah. in the West End. Got an upgrade, another boss. Can't do bad there, so you th things are looking up in the world. And uh, yeah. first of all, it's good to see you, you know, after your recent health scare. So, uh, how are you yeah, feeling? Um, yeah, it was a bit, uh, a bit sort of scary for a while. Mm, a bit, yeah. All right now, though, getting, getting back to um, normal. Good, it's good to hear, and it's good to see you. You're looking fighting fit. And uh, we're here today to talk about you got a, a, your first ever solo album coming out, The School of Hard Knocks. Yeah. And um, it's quite an old saying, really. You don't really hear it much these days. It's a bit yeah, like, you know, no, the stiff up the lip. Back. You know? Yeah, yeah. But the streets of Hard Knocks and School of Hard Knocks. Yeah, I, li I like it. It's an old, uh, it fits the um, idiom. Hmm. I say, you know, you, know, like you, say, you mentioned in the, in the title song, you're born on the back streets, just like you did in a you Never Surrender single as well, to the truth. And, um, you know, it's, it's a bit like, you know, it's quite autobiographical, this album. Well, it's a, it's a bit of a retrospective album, definitely. Uh, you know, and I think when you do a solo album, if you're in a, like a fairly big rock band, there's no point doing an album that's like them. You know, the, the, you know the, there's no point doing another Saxon album. Mm -hmm. People go, well, I won't, you know, have you fallen out with them? So uh, it has to be different, I think, and it has to be more of, uh, you know, me, basically. So uh, the first few tra tracks I wrote, those tracks, uh, a couple of years ago, actually. Um, so, yeah, um, yeah, it was about time, you know, the 40th anniversary. Uh, we thought we'd finished with those shows, so the album was scheduled to come out. Um, so yeah, it was a good time to release it, really. And let's talk about the, uh, let's say, the title track, you know, and um, like I say, it's called of Hard Knocks, and it's all, you know, it's about yourself and your upbringing, and you know, don't mind me saying you lost your mother at a very young age, at the age of eleven, and your father was injured. You know. Yeah, I think I think the, the song on the album cover sums up my early lives, you know, the steam trains and the factory and the coal mine and the church, my mum used to play organ and things, uh, playing football on the street, so I just thought the album cover was destined, you know, that painting I bought at auction was destined to be my album cover. Uh, <laughs> and who's, who's the artist on the Lowry. painting? It's I was about to say, I was going to ask you, was it Lowry? Yeah, I couldn't afford a Lowry, yeah. um, for a few million quid. <laughs> now, it's a guy called John Hanley uh, from uh, Leicester, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, he paints in that style. In fact, I think Lowry visited their art class yeah. and gave them a, a lesson or two. So, yeah, he paints in that style. He's from that school, you know, the Lowry style. Would you say you are, you are bringing in shape to the man that you are today? Um, probably does, but that's a bit a bit Freudian. I wouldn't know, really. But, you know, I mean, I see um, a lot of similarities between me and a few Yorkshire celebs. I say you can take the man out of Yorkshire, but you can't take the Yorkshire out of the man, can you? Well, you know, it's what it is, it's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I say, you know, I think um, a lot of people would say, you know, it's, like it's a solo album, but some people would say, oh, this could be a Saxon album, so... I don't think it could. I don't think it could. Uh, uh, there are a couple of songs on there that could be on Saxon album, mm -hmm. that, in particular the ones that me and Nibs wrote. Yeah. Um, uh, Hearts of Steel and Pedal to the Metal. Yeah. Uh, definitely much so. could be, but I think everything else, uh, two of them are, are, are too proggy, I think. Uh, Pit the Pendulum. Yeah, I think it's my favourite track on the album, that's yeah, a great yeah, song, a great epic track. One. But I think, um, you know, the first two songs, are, you know, they're definitely my style of writing, the mm. Rose of Steel style of writing, and then you've got, um, you know, a ballad on there, a song to my wife for our 21st, 5th anniversary. Um, so yeah, it, it, I don't think it could be a Saxon album ever. So let's talk about a, uh, the ballad to your wife, me and you, you know, it could be a song for any couple really out there. Definitely for any couple, yeah. Great song, you know, so... Uh, it's well, an acoustic, acoustic song, isn't it? Yeah. That me and Paul Quinn wrote yeah. years, years ago, oh, actually, wow. when I lived in France. Yeah. Uh, we were doing an unplugged album, that was the idea to do an unplugged mm -hmm. album, and it ended up being half and half orchestrated and unplugged. Yeah. And we, we wrote that piece of music, and then I said it was on my hard drive, and um, I just, you know, went back to it. And I was looking for songs and ideas for the album and uh, just wrote that song. So I think it's the first time I've ever heard your voice and there's, there's a saxophone on there as well on that song. That yeah, well, I nicked that off my son because my, my son, you know, he's in a band called Naked Six and mm -hmm. uh, he, used the, he used the guy to play sax on there. And, uh, of course, the guy joined um, 
where it's hung later. Yeah. Uh, and he lives local, you know, he lives near York. So he came down and played some Hammond organ on Throw Down the Sword and uh, played saxophone. He's yeah. a great sax player, mm. actually. You just mentioned Throw Down the Sword, one of two cover versions on the album. It was obviously a song by Wishbone Nash. So, big influence in you growing up? Yeah, massive influence. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to see my friend was a huge Wishbone Nash fan, he was a guitarist, and he turned me on to them. And uh, we used to go then down there to Leeds University and Sheffield City Hall and watch Wishbone Ash, basically. Mm -hmm. And they were around, come around all the time. Uh, they were quite big then, really, really big. I mean, John Peel used to play them on radio. And, mm. um, yeah, I, I thought they were really, really uh, groundbreaking band. It wasn't the only band that influenced me, yeah. but I think the close part vocals and guitar harmonies were quite radical. For you know, cause it's always been, people will say that they've influenced Finn Lizzy and Iron Maiden under the twin guitar sound. Totally, uh, totally. Mm. Yeah, totally. They I think the album Argos is an album that should be in every rock fan's collection, so anybody... I think Argos or Pilgrimage, yeah. definitely. Excellent. But Argos is my favourite. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a concept album, so it's quite proggy rocky as well, <laughs> so it fits the bill, you know. The other cover version on the album, which I suppose a lot of people, Scarborough Fair, a song popularised by... Scarborough Fair's not uncle. a cover version, though, no, is exactly, it? No, exactly, no, it's not a folk it's song, not, yeah. No, um, Simon and Garfunk was the cover version. Yeah. It's actually a cover of a very old traditional mm. Yorkshire folk song about Scarborough, mm -hmm. which is obviously in Yorkshire. And I must so, admit, on paper, when I first thought you were going to do this, I thought, oh my God, this is going to be a car crash. Well, I played it last night, and I thought, well, this is a fabulous version you've done well, here, actually. And you made it very oldie and folky. I mean, I had... Um, five or six different songs I could have done yeah and we did try some and uh, I wanted to do a song that was about where I'm from and Scarborough there's only Scarborough for an Oakley more about time mm. and can't really do that one so um, yeah so we tried it I know it's quite bold and unpredictable mm. but I like that everybody should know that because that's how Saxon are we're, yeah we're quite unpredictable <laughs> so um, yeah I put it on there and it sounds great I mean Frederick from Opeth yep. yeah we arranged it together it's quite a nice arrangement Brilliant. And uh, what other guests have you got in the album? Because I believe you've got Gus, and I'll let you make the pronunciation of the surnames. <laughs> Macri, Macri, Macriini or something. <laughs> anyway, he stood in for Nibs a couple yeah, of times. Yeah, right, yeah. So, you know, it's, um, it was the first choice, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've got Phil Campbell guessing on, uh, I think, the score of Hard Knocks title track. Phil Campbell from Motorhead. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's good to have him Phil's on board. A, Let's Phil's, talk about a the, um, Phil's a great rock and roller. Yeah, definitely, like yourself. And uh, the opening track, Welcome to the Show, is like a very sort of typical Saxon arithmetic well, it, it, song. Well, it could be, it could be, yeah, it could be, it could be 80s Saxon. I mean, it's a bit quirky, it's in 5-4 at the beginning and then goes into 4-4, four, four. so it's hard to dance to. But yeah, um, yeah, I wrote that song about audiences, really. Mm. I suppose it's a, a rockier version of Denim and Leather. You know. And as I say, yeah, it's something you touched on before about the audience and yourself, you know. So, so what's your connection between you and the audience and what does it mean to you? Between me and the audience? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think um, for me, I think making the connection uh, between the band and the audience is, uh, is, is, uh, is important to me as a singer and a front man. Uh, you, you want every gig to be intimate, mm. even if it's like 90,000 people. Like, you have a quest to make that happen. And you can say one thing that brings the audience hall mm. into where you are, you know. Talking of intimate audiences, you are doing a, a tour to back this album up. In I April. am, yeah. You're with a comedian, Don Jameson. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a friend be, of mine. Yeah, he's going to be comparing and you're doing a live yeah. set afterwards. Yeah, it's a bit like a talk show. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to be, he's going to be asking me questions and we're going to be telling stories and firing off each other. He's a funny guy. He's not quite as funny as me, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, he's a funny guy, and uh, you know, um, we'll just do that. We might in involve the audience a bit, throw some questions at us, you know, and get who's a bit weary your, with the who, audience. Get a bit, you know, weary. <laughs> who's going to be the touring band? Um, don't know yet. We're, I'm going to play with some people in Sweden. Yeah. A few of us are flying into Sweden um, because it's a cool place, and. Um, yeah, it'll be a great band. They're going to be a break, and then the band are going to do a full-on rock show, mm -hmm. which is quite a unique um, format. I yeah, think. yeah, definitely. I'm looking forward to it very much. Yeah. Also, we've got to be quick and wrap this interview up because you're a busy man today. 
Um, <laughs> she's to be taking it steady. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She was slowing down. <laughs> but you're not slowing down because you've still got the, uh, the Castle and Eagles date to do at Hammersmith, have, Glasgow, yeah. and Manchester. Yeah, we have. We've Glasgow, yeah. Glasgow, Castle, Diamond Head, and yeah. I believe Glasgow's already sold out. It is, yeah. yeah. Hammersmith, almost. I so get your yeah, tickets almost, if you haven't got them yet. Almost sold out, Hammersmith. I think there's about 80 tickets left, you know, so it's really going to be really great. Great, right, it's a busy year. I'd say it's the 40th anniversary of Wills of Steel. It's the 40th anniversary of Strong Arm of the Law as well. So It uh, is, yeah. So we've got, it's 40s all round. So you really have... Yeah, and we're going out with Judas Priest doing that Judas Priest package on the festivals yep, course, and things. Yeah, yeah. It's their 50 or 41. So it's good. It's a school of hard knocks. It's very good. You could say you've been to the University of Hard Knocks. Yeah, <laughs> the University <laughs> of Metal Hard Knocks. Maybe the tour of Hard Knocks, <laughs> yeah. mate. That's what it's going to be. Biff, it's great to see you smiling yeah. and rocking Any and rolling. Time. And um, we'll catch you again next time. Yeah, and look forward yeah. to the tour. Thank and you very don't much. don't read the minibar. <laughs> Cheers. <Okay. laughs>